all right guys welcome back to the traditional channel this is gonna be lecture number 25 roles a theory of justice suppose you are out walking and you see a prosperous young man in an expensive convertible you also notice a disheveled man riding through a garbage can in this is this disparity of wealth just there are two ways to approach this question an outcome or end state approach says that the disparity between the two men is unjust. A procedural or historical approach says that whether the disparity is unjust depends on history. Progressives and socialists tend to take the outcome approach. Neoliberals and libertarians the historical approach. In a theory of justice, Harvard philosopher John Rawls tried to combine these approaches on procedural grounds. Rational people would choose a partly outcome approach. A new version of the social contract. We have seen that traditional utilitarianism can justify redistribution. The progressives use some version of utilitarianism and an organic theory of the self from German Romanticism. But the problem of utility is that it seems to justify violation of individual rights and utility is that it seems to justify and the positive notion of liberty seems to threaten sim similarly. The ontological natural rights protect all individuals from harm, including harms that would benefit others. Rawls, prospers, sorry, Rawls proposes a new path. He uses a deontological natural rights theory to argue for the welfare state over libertarianism, natural liberty. Rawls wants to advance the progressive's view of Hobhaus and others, but with Kant, not Mill. Rights can get you to welfare. Rawls will accept the priority of right, rules of association, over good, and collective goal, hence neutralism, government neutrality with respect to private notions of the good, the government just enforces the right rules of association. Rawls' new egalitarian liberalism, from the ontological ethics slash rights, no individual rights violations leads to natural liberty slash libertarianism, can harm rich to benefit poor, and from utilitarianism, greatest good for greatest number, Progressive slash egalitarian liber leads to progressive slash egalitarian liberalism stacks the few to help the many. John Rawls' justice as fairness theory proposes a new approach to answer the question what distribution of goods and services in society is just. The core of Rawls' theory is a new version of the social contract. Those principles of justice are right that would be chosen by free, rational, self-interested agents in a condition of equality. We will look at three components of this theory. The original position, Ralph's version of the state of nature, the two principles of justice that will be chosen in the original position, and their reasoning for those principles. Understanding Ralph's justice. Ralph begins with a modern social contract theory, that is, he admits that they are never was a state of nature. Humans have always been social and political. But the idea behind the contract theory is right. That rational, selfish people would choose the system is the test of the system's validity. Thus, he asks us to imagine the original position, a hypothetical condition of equality among rational, self-interested persons. These imaginary people would choose the principles of justice. He posits the following constraints on them and their choice. There are some formal constraints. It will be a one-time only decision. No one can propose principles that no one else could accept. And we assume that everyone finds good certain things that anyone would need, whatever his or her theory of the good might be. That is, income, rights, opportunities, and so on. This is Raoul's thin theory of the good. More important, the imaginary people are instrumentally rational able to pick or plan what best accomplishes their aims. They are mutually disinterested or selfish, except for concern about some members of next generation. And crucially, they operate on their veil of ignorance, with no knowledge of society, others, or 
one's own self, allowing any inference as to where one might individually fall in any distributive scheme. Rawls argues that these imaginary people would pick two definite particular par principles of justice, maximum equal political liberty, basically all personal civil and political liberties in the Bill of Rights and the Constitution, and the idea that socioeconomic inequalities are just if they attach to positions, open to all, and that benefit all. Testing Rawls' Theory Let's first consider the principle, open to all. Imagine that Mary, the neurosurgeon, makes $200,000 a year, and Fred, the bus driver, makes $30,000 a year. Under what conditions is that difference just or unjust? This inequality is open to all, and Fred could have become a neurosurgeon. There are three possible sources of inequality that could prevent him from doing so. Law, birth status, and talent slash effort. Natural liberty, libertarianism, would reject only legal inequality, yielding careers open to talent. Kral says that the inequality is also unjust if birth status, which is nothing but a natural lottery, made a difference. Only talent slash effort is permitted. This is fair opportunity. Second, inequality must be must benefit all. Rawls interprets this phrase through the difference principle. Remove inequalities to the point where more removal would harm the least advantaged. Natural liberty would choose Italian economics Bilfredo Pareto's efficiency principle. Lift all boats harming no one up to the point where the Bettering someone by reducing inequality would harm someone. Rawls difference principle goes much further. Socioeconomic inequalities must benefit the least advantage to be just. Thus, the Mary slash Fred inequality is just only if the neurosurgeon's advantage benefits the bus drivers either in producing more qualified neurosurgeons, otherwise uh, to operate on bus drivers or to drive economic productivity, which benefits the bus driver. If we look at all four ways to combine the two different ways of interpreting the second principle, justice as fairness, picks democratic equality, fair opportunity plus the difference principle, not natural liberty or neoliberalism slash libertarianism, justice requires that the only thing keeping Fred from earning Mary's 200,000 is talent or effort not his birth status, and that Mary's extra $170,000 actually benefit Fred and people like him. Why wouldn't rational, mutually disinterested persons under the veil of ignorance pick these principles? The first principle is easy. People want a civil and political system where they are as free as they can be and where they have as much say in who governs as they can. The second principle is the key. As rational beings, we will use the maximum rule which says choose the option whose worst case is better than the other option's worst cases, because we cannot predict where we will fall in any of those possible income distributions, we take no chances, we choose. Here we have income distribution options for Rouse, laissez-faire, high inequality, efficiency principle, reducing inequality, difference principle, Rouse, Socialist equality, pure equality. And you can see the gap uh, becoming smaller and smaller between them. With four choices for income distribution, Rawls' justice of fairness theory predicts that rational people would choose the option that operates on the difference principle to remove inequality. The distribution under which the poorest are better off than in any other distribution, that is, we modify a presupposition of equality as the most rational choice. Will we pick whatever system provides the best conditions for the least advantage, the poorest? If perfect equality does that, we will pick the perfect equality, but it probably won't. If a society with capitalist inequality does it, we'll pick that. Why? Because it is in our self-interest. In a one-time only choice where we have no reason to believe we won't be last, we might end up being the poorest. Thus, we pick both fair opportunity and the difference principle, which makes the poorest better off than in any other distribution. 
What does this mean in practice? One answer is high taxes on Mary's to make sure that Fred's school, housing, health, care, and so on are good as hers. Mary gets to keep only that portion of her higher income that, if we took it away, would make Fred worse off, for example, by ruining economic productivity. Why is this approach not unjust to the more advantage? First, because of the moral arbitrariness of the natural lottery. No one deserves nor can have a right to what is morally arbitrary, such as what we are born with, health, talents, family, advantages, and so on. Advantages must be morally deserved, not morally arbitrary. Second, Rawls adopts the legal theories H.L.A. Hart's principle of fairness. Those who voluntarily benefit from a cooperative scheme in which others have accepted restrictions or disadvantages or a similar obligation. Imagine the count contractor who says he pulled himself up by his own bootstraps and resents giving money to welfare programs. But did he get but did he go to public schools? Does he drive his trucks on public created roads? Virtually all advantages imply a social contribution. No one except the poorest doesn't own society. Thus, it is morally acceptable to make a portion of everyone's income or wealth. What this all means is that rational, self-interested persons would choose to share each other's fate, not because they are morally good, they aren't, but because they want it for themselves. Rawls in practice. In practice, Rawls wants us to score society for all of those cases where an inequality is not due solely to talent slash effort alone and does not benefit the last advantage. All others are to be taxed away to raise lower income groups. In effect, this is the Scandinavian social democratic model, capitalist but with high taxes, relatively low inequality, and with governmental health care, daycare, education, housing, and so on. In our scenario, we might tax Mary, say, down to 100,000 net, and raise Fred's net benefits to 50,000, with improvements to high his school district, health care, and other services up to the point that an additional reduction in Mary's income will destroy the competitiveness of neurosurgeons as a profession or the economic investment they make, which might drive Fred's benefits down. Rawls achieves a progressive welfare state agenda by starting with a Kantian natural rights foundation rather than utilitarianism. Rawls combination of rights theory and the welfare state or egalitarianism became the classic egalitarian liberal theory of the post 1960s, but it produced a reaction just down the hall in the Harvard philosophy department. Robert Nozick, the most philosophically sophisticated libertarian or minimal state liberal, would take his turn next. Well, guys, I hope you really like this new video on Rawls and who he was. And in any case, if you never heard of him before, uh, let me know in, in the comments what you thought about it. What do you think about his uh, theory in reducing inequality in the society? Well, guys, see you later.